If you plan to take a week-long training class from the National Cave Rescue Commission, or NCRC, you'll need to demonstrate proficiency in single rope technique before beginning the class. This includes having appropriate vertical caving gear that functions properly, being able to put on your vertical gear without assistance, and having the right personal protective equipment. Once that gear is on, you'll need to demonstrate that you can get on rope safely and perform a series of SRT skills safely and efficiently. All of this needs to be demonstrated to instructors during the entrance skills test, which has a 25 minute time limit. You must start with your vertical gear in a pack and show that you can put that gear on properly without assistance. This shows that you are familiar with the equipment and how to wear and adjust it. That gear should include proper personal protective equipment that includes a helmet with a chin strap that should be worn before entering the drop zone near the base of the rope and a good pair of gloves that should be worn whenever handling a moving rope. The ascending system should be of a type that allows maintaining two gripping attachment points to the rope throughout the ascent. The most common systems for vertical caving are the Frog, Texas, Rope Walker, or Mitchell. The Frog system is the most common and is a good choice for cave rescue training because it offers a good balance between climbing efficiency, ability to perform mid-rope maneuvers such as changeovers and down climbing, and is easy to wear while traveling through horizontal cave passages. The commercially sewn seat harness is required that has an extra tether or cow's tail with a carabiner that is not part of your ascending system. The two primary ascenders in the climbing system should both be attached to the master attachment point of the seat harness. A descender that can be safely locked off for hands-free maneuvers is required and should be either a bobbin with a braking beaner, a 4-bar micro rack, a 6-bar open frame rack, a rescue 8 or a scarab. The most common descenders are the bobbin or micro rack. Before approaching the drop zone at the base of the rope, be sure to call on rope to notify other cavers and rescuers that you are getting ready to climb, validates that the rope is free, and warns others to avoid any activity that might knock rocks loose. On rope! Approach the rope, attach your ascending system, and begin to climb. Be sure you've remembered your helmet and gloves during this early phase of the test. Forgetting to put on this personal protective equipment is one of the most common reasons for failing. You must climb approximately 30 feet on a free hanging rope smoothly and efficiently. After this ascent, you must perform a changeover to repel. The descender should be properly rigged and fully locked off. Before removing the final ascender, the safety test of the descender must be demonstrated. This involves visually checking that it is properly rigged, releasing the lock off, and demonstrating that it functions properly by descending a short distance before removing the final ascender and committing to the single attachment point of the descender. Before performing the safety test, move the upper ascender down until it is just above the descender. This gives you the maximum amount of room to perform the test without tensioning the tether to the upper ascender. If this tether gets tension during the test, then it's likely you'll have to do a changeover to ascent and start over. This is one of the most common mistakes during the entrance skills exam. Repel until you are a short distance above the ground, demonstrating that repel speed and position can be well controlled. Perform a changeover back to ascent. A full lock off of the descender is not a requirement, but is usually necessary to free up the hands to attach ascenders to the rope. Once both ascenders are back on the rope, the descender can be unlocked and detached. From here, you'll need to downcline to the ground. This is done by shifting weight between ascenders and lowering the unweighted descender. This should be done using a technique called thumbing the cam, where you push down on the cam of the ascender to allow it to slide down the rope without removing it from the rope. Avoid pulling on or releasing the safety lever of the cam. Alternate weight shifts between the two primary ascenders until reaching the ground. One of the challenges is to perform these down climbing steps without tensioning the tether to the upper ascender. Once you reach the ground, unclip from the rope, move out of the drop zone, 
and after reaching an area of safety, be sure to call off-rope. Off-rope!